This is Leonard Manicero. Leonard. Good morning. Yeah, good morning. Yeah, uh, I'm the third generation here uh, with this ranch here, and it was planted probably in the 30s, sometime in the 30s, and uh, my son and I, uh, Greg, are here. Uh, we're taking care of the place, and, and hopefully we'll keep it going for a while anyway. We're with Mike McKay out in Manicero Vineyard in the south side of Lodi's McCullumy River. <laughs> Mike, tell me, tell us about these old, old vines here. What, what's neat about this Grenache, uh, as best we can tell, is planted right around 1935. It is a, a true story of Lodi. By that I mean, you've got this beautiful, spectacular vineyard that was planted 1935-ish that has never been on its own. Uh, it's always been put into uh, big ton fermenters, uh, crushed with Zinfandel, uh, it is just a great Lodi story. This year for 2014 will be the first year that we're going to take this Grenache and make it on its own. So it's got beautiful concentrated flavors. Usually you see a Grenache cluster that's going to be about the size of a big piece of pie. Uh, these clusters, as you can see, are uh, half that. So we're getting beautiful small berries, concentrated flavors, just spectacular fruit coming out of here. Uh, we will uh, do this uh, native fermentation, uh, looking for bright, bouncy, grown style Grenache uh, from 2014. So I'm very excited about, about this vineyard and being able to uh, work with this fruit for the first time.
very stable, very balanced vineyard, and easy to work with potato fermentation. So how many days will it be in cold salt before you uh, let it start fermenting naturally? Uh, as long as we can get it to go. It's, it has a point of its own, it will really be up to the fruit. When it starts going on its own, uh, that's just what happens. It starts to take off and fermentation goes. So, yeah, in years past, the last couple, three vintages, we've seen as much as uh, 10 days, uh, 11 days, and it's two, four, or five. It just depends on uh, what the fruit decides it wants to do. This year, with the beautiful, uh, cool nights we've been having, uh, very balanced days, low 90 degrees, uh, I expect this to be a full soak of a good solid 10 days. Okay, so this morning we picked out two different Grenache vineyards. One from the north side, uh, the uh, Lodi ABA, McCullough ABA, and one from over on the south side. Uh, the first vineyard picked this morning was the Manicero Grenache vineyard planted in 1935. Uh, trunks that are, oh, about yay big in size. Just big old, old gnarly, beautiful vines. Uh, the second vineyard was the Ava vineyard, the Grenache vineyard, over the north part of the, the ABA. Uh, younger vines, a little under 10 years old. Uh, with that vineyard, you get beautiful clusters. Abbas do a fantastic job in their farming technique. One of the outstanding farmers of Lodi. Uh, we've got nice berries here, uh, very larger cluster when we compare it to the Manicero cluster. That 80-ish plus year old vineyard has a little more smaller berries, a little more concentrated. So I love the bright, bouncy fruit that we get from the Ava vineyard, along with a little more tannin, a little richer from an older vineyard like the Manicero. So what a great compliment for crushing both of them this morning, of course. We've already done the, uh, the, the Manicero. We've got that. We're keeping that separate. We're going to come back and then finish up on the Ava. Keep separate. There'll be a ball of tasties come next spring. So, uh, what can I say? The Vineyard of the Year in California. So this is the Cinso Vineyard that's farmed by uh, Phillips Farm. We were lucky enough to get a little bit of fruit out of this particular vineyard. Uh, we have, uh, uh, let's see, we picked this eight days ago. Uh, it came in with about 25 bricks. We uh, crushed it, we cold soaked it, and here it sits today. So we are getting ready to uh, uh, let this warm up. If you look at this fruit down here, you can see how really inky, dirty. We still have a lot of whole berries in here, which uh, a little bit of whole cluster going on. Uh, you can see that the crush was very soft. Uh, it's just starting to warm up a little bit. We dropped about uh, a half, almost a brick here in the last uh, 48 hours. So it's just starting to go. Uh, we have not inoculated this, meaning we have not added any uh, yeast to it. We're going to go native fermentation on it. And uh, very excited where it is so far. Uh, uh, after we crushed it, it, it tasted like a Michael David blueberry pie. It was full of blueberries and lavender. There's spectacular notes and flavors coming off right from the get go. So, very excited. It's a 2014 harvest. Mike, so what is cold soap? Just for. Cold soap is where we'll take and we'll cool the, the fruit down to the must after we stem the grapes. And we'll let it sit in a cool space, whether it's a tank or a room, get it down below 50 degrees so fermentation won't start. We do not want fermentation to start. We want to sit on the skins, uh, take some of the tannins out of those skins, the color, the flavors, and the longer the cold soap, the we feel the better it is for the wine. So we're going to spend uh, anywhere from a week or longer with that cold soap. Uh, once we feel we've got that optimal soap done, we'll pull it out, let it start to warm up. And here right now it's about uh, 68 degrees, so we're going to start to warm up. We want to warm slow. We don't want it to catch on fire and jump to 95 degrees. So we keep it in a room that's still climatized so that we can let that natural fermentation take over and start out with a nice slow process. Well, now that it's just gotten started, about how long is it going to take before it completes fermentation? 
that's going to be up to Mother Nature and actually to the, the mind of the, the fruit itself. This is so will the slide when it takes place. Uh, we're, we're counting on the indigenous yeast to the vineyard to come in and start that fermentation. And it will be how long it takes. You never know. Some years it's faster, slower, warmer, cooler. Uh, there's so many variables that go into growing wine grapes. And so many variables when it goes into wine making, they're never the same. If they were, everyone's wine would taste the same. So that's what I love about like, I can smell my hand right now, and I smell like I just blueberry pop. It's just very, very perfume is pushing off this. Uh, right. But the cold soap will be, and the fermentation will go on its own. Terrific. So that's Bechtel Sensol 2014. Thanks, Randy. You bet.